Yeah, I mean, I was gonna like dress up as the musician with like a cool Afro wig and like some glasses and a guitar. And I was gonna do like a Freddy Krueger thing where I had a mask, you know, the whole slasher film thing. And then there's of course the SpongeBob clip. The slash bringing hasher. Slash bringing hasher. Slinging slasher. The hash slinging the slash. The sash ringing. The ringing the trash singing. Trash singing. Trash. I, but I couldn't memorize all of that. And so now I'm just me here doing it this way. After marinating for a few years, the Trek Slash is back with an entirely new look and layout. That look does in fact resemble a session, but with a high pivot. Starting off on the broadest details and honing in, we'll first talk about travel and wheel size. Travel numbers have gone up a little bit on the new Slash. We've got 170 millimeters in the rear and 170 up front. And on the wheel size, it's now a mullet bike, sort of. Stock builds come with a 27.5 rear wheel and a 29 front. But for those of you that want 29 front and rear, you can buy an aftermarket shock link that allows you to keep the geometry essentially unchanged, but run the larger wheel in the rear. Additionally, the size small can only be run with full 27.5 wheels. Sorry to you short people out there. One detail that small riders will like though is the dropper post insertion on these bikes. Size medium and up can run a 200 mil post fully slammed and the size small can run a 170 fully slammed. With wheel size sorted, let's talk geometry. The Slash comes stock with a 63.5 degree head angle, but can now be modified by one degree with aftermarket press-in cups, much like the Fuel EX. The seat angle is nice and steep at 77 degrees, and chainstay lengths vary by size with about a five mil jump between each step. Reaches range from 430 mil on the size small to 513 on the XL, with this size large sporting a reach of 488 millimeters. Stack heights grow by about 20 to 30 mil with each size increment, and the bottom bracket drop is 27 millimeters across the board. All of these geometry numbers, save for the angles, change slightly when you install a 29 inch wheel in the rear. So keep that in mind as you're poking through the in-depth first look article. All right, leaving the numbers behind, there are a few frame details worth touching on. The first of which is the lack of knock block. I know for the few of you who ride treks, do tail whips, and aren't Brandon Seminuk, that's gonna be great news. But really, it's good news for everybody because running into something at the end of your steering radius and the extra complication of dealing with the knock block insertion piece is a nice thing to see done away with. Trek continues to use their excellent little frame storage hatch, which might be the most secure on the market in my experience. This is featured on both the carbon and the alloy frames, adding value to those lower price frame kits. One detail that you'll only see on the carbon bikes is an extra layer of protective carbon armor on the down tube. Additional protection on that pretty face comes in the form of a dual density guard, both around the bottom bracket and as a shuttle pad up above, which amounts to quite a lot of coverage down there. Back to that suspension design for a moment, as there's quite a bit at play there on the new Slash. The new high pivot layout gives the Slash a rearward axle path, though it's not as extreme as some of the other high pivots on the market. You can adjust the leverage progression by flipping the little chip in the lower shock mount. The 19 tooth idler makes sure pedal kickback is negated, and the lower idler keeps the chain wrap at a maximum, ensuring better drivetrain wear and more secure operation. Trek is of course still using their active braking pivot linkage, which allows them to tune anti-squat and anti-rise independently while keeping things moving even when the brakes are fully locked up. On the pedaling front, anti-squat is kept nearly dead even throughout the entire range of travel, hovering just above 100%. This means the bike should be a nice mix of supportive and active under pedaling without having any strange movements as things push the bike deeper into travel. The larger idler and lower cage pulleys are meant to increase pedaling efficiency as well, which should help keep things from feeling too draggy. The build you see here is the 9.9 XO Axis T-Type build, really rolls off the tongue, but that's the second highest tier option and gets you RockShox ultimate level suspension, 
code RSC brakes, of course, a transmission drivetrain, as well as a few other high-end bits like the Bontrager Line 30 wheels, the Axis seat post, and this slick looking one-piece bar stem combo. Hopefully you don't like to roll your bars because they're just set in one spot. There's also a handy little multi-tool in the headset, as well as, of course, the SWAT and all the accoutrement that comes in there. Where this build retails for 9,400 US dollars, the entire range has quite a bit of span in it, if you will. The lowest price slash eight, which comes with an aluminum frame, retails for 4,400 US dollars, and the highest end carbon build kit is the 9.9XX axis T-type build, which is 11,500 US dollars. I've been lucky enough to ride this slash here for the past few weeks, and suffice to say that so far it has lived up to expectation, both uphill and downhill. The geometry is really quite dialed. It's like as close to something I'd jot down on a piece of paper if I was asked to design like a all mountain big travel bike. Um, maybe a couple tweaks here and there, but it feels super balanced and very composed in rough terrain. The reach is great, the head angle, the chainstays seem a bit short on paper, but because they grow under dynamic sag, it feels really balanced in corners and when you're on the brakes and steeper stuff. I hurt my hand a few weeks ago, and in a weird way, the Slash has been kind of a recovery bike because it's so squishy and comfortable. But despite that soft and really comfortable suspension, it doesn't feel wallowy when you're actually pushing it. It just doesn't beat you up as much as some other racy feeling bikes might. In addition to all that, it really does climb very well, especially for a 170 mil bike. Um, it just hums along pretty evenly. The drivetrain remains surprisingly quiet when you keep it well lubricated, and it's really nice and even over bumpier, kind of chunky climbs. Um, I think partially because that wheel just moves backwards out of the way, also because the anti-squat is very consistent. It never does anything weird and like plunges into travel or like kicks you up at all. It just kind of absorbs the bumps and allows you to keep putting down power. It has really good grip as well on the climbs, which is nice. I wouldn't call it like a sprinty or peppy feeling climbing bike, but I've been super happy to pedal it for long periods. It does great. Lastly, just touching on the descending capabilities. I mean, it's a long travel bike with very aggressive geometry and surprise, it works really well when you go downhill. Um, the bike feels super composed, especially in steep terrain, thanks in part to the smaller rear wheel, but also to the like high pivot rearward axle path feel of the bike. It just soaks up big hits really well. It corners nicely. And I think like the overall package in how they've spec'd this bike and built it up just handles really well. Like I think I would change out like a couple little items in terms of like finishing kit, but overall it comes as like a super capable, burly all mountain bike. There are a ton of details to the new Trek Slash and I have barely scratched the surface today because my brain is melting. Um, for all the important information, some first impressions on the bike, as well as details on all the build kits and all the spec levels, be sure to check out the first look article on Pink Bike. And if you want more bike content, if you want to see other videos of me awkwardly delivering tech information, be sure to subscribe. But if you don't want to, just go out and ride your bike. Thank you.